Assalamu alaikum, namaskar, and good morning. I'm extremely delighted to welcome you uh, to this program, 50 Years of Bangladesh, hosted by the Center for Governance Studies. Today's event is the culmination of CGS year-long endeavor celebrating Bangladesh journey since independence. I would like to open uh, today's event by sharing a personal anecdote. A few days ago, I was having breakfast with my mother. She turned 78 that day. I asked how she was doing at that age. Was she doing well? She replied to me with another question, how old is Bangladesh? I said, Bangladesh is 50 now. She then asked me, is the 50 years old Bangladesh doing well? I asked myself multiple times after that conversation, is Bangladesh doing well? Ladies and gentlemen, we bought our independence in 1971 with the price of three million lives, countless battles, and nine month long war. But what about the promises we made in the aftermath of 71? In the proclamation of independence, we promised three things for the people of Bangladesh, equality, human dignity, and social justice. Those promises that motivated us to fight against the authoritarian government of West Pakistan are the promises being kept. As you all know, the election of 1970 played an instrumental role in the independence of Bangladesh. Right before the liberation war, the East Pakistan-based Awami League secured a landslide victory, winning 167 of the 169 seats in East Pakistan. We set an example of true democracy, which drove the people of East Pakistan to fight for an independent country. People from all backgrounds, genders, and religions were united together for a common goal, to fight for a country for our own, to build a nation where we could practice mutual respect, tolerance, and peaceful coexistence with the people of different religious beliefs and political ideologies. After 50 years of independence, here we are watching hate crimes and communal violence during religious festivals instigated by a mere Facebook post. The 1991 election was another significant step towards democracy. Bangladesh entered the phase of electoral democracy characterized by regular competitive free and fair elections, very limited restrictions on the freedoms of expression and assembly, the presence of vibrant civil society, and the promise of an independent judiciary. Today, however, Bangladesh press freedom is ranked one of the worst in the world, according to the World Press Freedom Index. Hundreds of people are becoming victims of extrajudicial killings every year which is in blatant violation of the constitutions. As a result, Bangladesh also ranks near the bottom of the bottom in the rule of law index. With the absence of a functioning opposition party at the parliament and the growing absence of transparency and accountability in the government institutions, the situation keeps worsening. As the ruling party changes, we have seen how the actual history of our liberation war is altered to meet political ends. This has escalated, escalated into a filthy debate over years with no positive outcome. Now we are seeing our neighboring country distort our struggle for their benefit. In the past few years, we have seen certain actors in India promote our liberation war as an Indo-Pakistan conflict, which undermines the sacrifices of our martyrs. The Pakistani side echoes this perspective as it is less embarrassing to lose war against a strong opponent. Unfortunately, there is no proper academic or intellectual reply to this fabrication. This lack of a Bangladesh-centric narrative has also resulted in the liberation war being perceived as an Indo-Pakistan conflict by the rest of the world. This brings a question to the table. Will we be able to protect our original version of the story, or will our glory 
fade away due to the gradual fabrications of different ruling parties and the neighboring countries. The architect of our nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, had a dream for a society of equality and justice. Under his leadership in 1972, we formed a constitution of our own, a constitution based on four fundamental principles, nationalism, socialism, democracy, and secularism. After five decades of the form formulation of our first constitution, we are far away from the achievement Bangabundu's hoped for. Although there is a long way left for us to reach our promised nation, there are things to be proud of too. Bangladesh has received the final recommendation by the Committee for Development Policy of the United Nations in February 2021 to graduate from the category of least developed country, LDC, in 2026, and United, General, United Nations General Assembly passed it. Our effort to achieve the Millennium Development Goal was praiseworthy. Bangladesh received the UN Award for its remarkable achievements in attaining the Millennium Development Goals, MDGs, particularly in reducing child mortality. Our journey in the process of digitalization is remarkable, making the public service efficient and faster. Bangladesh has emerged as one of the leaders in e-government development among the LDCs, according to the report by UN e-government development index 2022. There are some of the many notable achievements in the 50 years journey of Bangladesh. Today, to celebrate the golden jubilee of independence, to recall the spirit of the liberation war, and to reflect upon the 50 year journey of our nation since independence, we have with us our chief guest and keynote speaker, Dr. Akbar Ali Khan. Dr. Khan is a freedom fighter, renowned economist, and former advisor to the caretaker government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Thank you, Dr. Khan, for being with us. We also have three special guests at the program today, three heroes of the Liberation War, Lieutenant Colonel Jafar Imam Bir Bikram, Major General Retired Helal Moshed Khan Bir Bikram, and Major General Retired Soyed Mohammed Ibrahim Bir Pratik. We are honored to have them with us today. Today's program will be chaired by your very own Dr. Munjur Ahmed Choudhury, Chairman of the Center for Governance Studies, CGS. Center for Governance Studies has also arranged an op open essay competition on the achievement of Bangladesh in the last 50 years. The participants were students from higher secondary to university. The winner of the competition will be honored today in this event. We have also published a book with the best essays collected from the competition. Uh, thanks to the participants and advance congratulations to the winners. We'd like to extend our special thanks to Dhaka Bank Limited, Fair Technology, Hyundai, Team Group, NRPC Bank for their unrelenting support for this endeavor. I would personally like to thank the members of the Team CGS for their relentless effort and hard work. Your enthusiasm and eagerness make any difficult task easier and successful. Uh, thank you for keeping up the good spirit, Team CGS. I believe that in the next few hours, we'll witness some thoughtful contribution from our guests to the purpose we are gathered here for. In closing, I would like to end by announcing a few upcoming planned endeavors by CGS. CGS will organize the first edition of the ELE International Flagship Conference, the Bay of Bengal Conversation, next year. The dialogue will take place in mid-2022 here at the Intercontinental Dhaka. This unique platform will convene over 200 delegates from over 70 countries to join the brightest minds in Bangladesh to discuss, debate, ideate the most pressing regional and global challenges. The dialogue will bring together diverse voices across sectors and geographies as it seeks to discover new ideas and propose new solutions that serve an emerging human-centric world order out of the Bay of Bengal. CGS will also organize the Global Directions Conclave, ZDC, an annual intensive 10-day policy workshop, which is scheduled to be held in end of the 2022 in Dhaka and Cox's Bazar, Bangladesh. Each year, the conclave will bring together 50 outstanding young leaders between 25 and 35 years of age 
from diverse backgrounds, geographies, and sectors. The conclave aims to foster leadership qualities among the selected fellows, to engage them in discussions on issues that are trending worldwide, and to serve as a networking platform through cross-border dialogue, deliberations, and debates with prominent figures from the world of politics, business, and academia. Fellows of the conclave will get opportunities to assess as well as challenges in conventional interpretations of the global challenges. CJS is already conducting an extensive youth training program called the Youth Researchers Development Forum, YRDF. The goal of the forum is to equip young students with the knowledge and the skills to become skilled researchers in their respective fields by giving them practical research experience and introducing them to the latest research technology and methodology. Thank you everyone once again for joining us today. Thank you for your support and your valuable time. Good luck and good day.